Hi everyone, it's Ella Rose here. I just um, want to share some things. I'm not sure if people are aware of Unidrite and what it's done to Australia. Okay, so the lawyers we trusted did this to Australians. In 1973, Prime Minister Whitlam signed the Commonwealth of Australia over to Unidrite Treaty of Rome in order to subject the Australian people to Roman law as a control system for Australia. This is an extract from the book, The Law of Persons, dealing with Roman law, with the terms and conditions to the surf, surf, sorry about that, as we have become under the new Unijoint Treaty of Rome. This will explain why the state and the police are now treating Australian people like slaves and dogs. Were we ever told this? If so, how come so few people ever know about it? In 1973, Gough Whitlam signed Australia over to the Foreign Unidroid Treaty of Rome, handing the equitable title of Mineral and Energy Wealth of Australia to a foreign power, head office Rome. Why do so few people know about this criminal act of treason, and why were there so many lawyers in Parliament that pledged their oath to a foreign country, the City of London, in order to hide the truth from the masses? Unidroid uses all uppercase, debase, corrupt dog Latin text, of Roman law of Babylon, Rome being foreign to the common law English language. Dog Latin is used for foreign Roman Vatican military accounts. Military dog tags. The United States was signed over to Unidroit in 1964, just after Kennedy was shot dead. The fact was hidden from the masses. So in Unidroit, we're dealing with private contracts of Rome. reality of the new world order really is. How do banks really work when money and dollars are completely separate things? A dollar is a mil military or a company script. An internal bank note or a promise to pay at some point in the future only reacts to the internal private account holders such as private corporate banking entity. A dollar is not money, evident by the Latin meanings of both words dollar and money. The very word bank does not mean safe. A bank is the edge of a river that controls, directs the flow of the current. Currency is energy, is current. Well, current dollars are the accounts of the debit currency. So a bank does not have money. It is the director of the flow of debit currency. Debit titles being dollars. The gold is you, being dominated, being the dominion over the mineral and energy wealth that was originally granted to living man and without you acting as the account holder of the bank. Under hidden trust law split title arrangement that renders you as legal title holder of their account. They lose equitable rights over your dominion because dominion was never granted to a dead entity such as a corporation. Dominion was only ever granted to man and the bank can only act as a commercial agent of a living man on the condition such a living man has agreed or been deceived into acting as a dead account holder of such a bank in order that the equitable title falls into the hands of the bank. The bank sits between you, your Christian name, certificate of birth, and your surname, state birth certificate. As an agent administrator of the Christian name, Christ account being the separate certificate of birth, birthed in the registration date. Once the bank can deceive you into assuming that their surname that looks a lot like your heritage name, Smith is glossed into Smith or Capitals, the bank assumes consent in order to confer the legal title of the bank to their surname that you assume was your property. All uppercase text is a foreign written language identified in Article 11147 of the Chicago Manual Style, 16th edition. Your surname glossed into a foreign sign language is not your property, but when you attach your Christian name, being the name that is attached to your dominion, to their foreign all uppercase surname, you, by your own consent, become subject to the account of their property. So simple but so effective, and yet so biblically perfect, once you violate the laws of the first God, by serving the false God, God of the person corporation, the power of trust law, greatest power of all, trust law is a master-servant relationship, it does not work backwards, it is a system of conferring debt accounts into the unsuspecting. 
The one who accepts legal title is the one who acknowledges that equitable title is the one who grants such a man the legal title. Legal title can only be held by a living man. Only a person can hold legal title. And what is a person, you may ask? It is the legal holder of a man. The only thing that created that person, being a mask in a play, was the Vatican, Rome. The word Vatican means that I air can, meaning holder or vessel I can do, meaning the Vatican has become the first trustee legal title holder of the dominion of living man. The Vatican has become the beast of the burden and has no jurisdiction with living man because it agreed to act as the trustee. The Vatican now holds the legal title over the dominion of man, offered the accounts of the legal title to its own person by offering such a title to be to a living man only when the living man was deceived into accepting such an account. Did such a man become the assumed debit or trustee person of the world debits of the Vatican. And such acceptance of such account was com the confirmation that granted equitable title back to the Vatican because the living man accepted the legal title, rendering the living man to fall into the jurisdiction of the debt account holder of the Vatican beast instead of being the first trustee of the real God of the living man. The Vatican is the God of, God of the dead person because it was not God of man that created dead, juristic, corporate person. It was the Vatican that created such a thing as person. The Vatican is the false God. So it's not just Australia, it's worldwide. So this is why we pretty much have no say in anything and the Constitution means jack to them. They don't care. So I just thought I'd make it a quick one. Thanks for watching. Bye.